Hey everybody, this is me, the Undead Viking, and this is Food Truck Champion. Food Truck Champion is a card game for three to five players from Daily Magic Games, in which each person uh, takes over as the owner of a food truck uh, who is competing to uh, create and serve as much food as they possibly can over a short period of time and be the best food truck owner in the, I don't know, tri-state area or what have you. But um, the game is, you know, a, a victory point game. It is a pretty straightforward, uh, like, a card use game. Uh, the cool thing about this game, is, unlike a lot of games like its type, is that each card can be used in multiple different ways, which is something that I really, really like uh, in my card game. Uh, so let me show you how to play Food Truck Champion. It shouldn't take too long, and then we'll come back here, and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, cool. Let's learn how to play Food Truck Champion. I've gone ahead and set up the game for three players. Uh, if you have four or five players, this is the marketplace. It has six cards with three players. You're going to have eight cards with four or five. These stacks of scoring tokens would have more tokens in them if you had four or five players as well. The big reason for that is that once two of these stacks of scoring tokens are used up and depleted, that triggers the end game, and then you go into uh, find, finding out who won. So with having a four or five players, you add more to those so the game uh, lasts the appropriate amount of length. All right, so each person is going to get this card here. This is your food truck. This is the Bear Burgers. They also get an owner card. Here are the awesome uh, Bear Burgers brothers, boys, guys. They have cool beards. That's why I took that one, because I have a cool beard as well. Uh, but there are several other food trucks you can pick. Um, you know, Lady Josephine's, Tacos de Muertos, uh, Soul Sisters, and Urban Garden. And of course, they all have their owner cards as well, as you can see. I love this guy. He's like, Tacos de Muertos. He's just like holding that taco like it's like a weapon. <laughs> oh, I, have, I have death tacos. But anyway, uh, you know, and I do like the fact that they've kind of, they, they've, I'm sure there's probably a tacos de muertos somewhere, but I mean, I, you know, if you've been around food trucks, you know that they kind of have a, their own style, their own panache, if you will. But anyway, so you put the cards down like that, and each person gets dealt five cards from that deck. Um, you have a hand limit of six cards in this hand. If you ever have more than six cards in your hand, you have to discard down to six, and you just form a discard pile over there. If this deck is ever depleted, you go ahead and take the discard pile without shuffling it. You just flip it over and create the new pile for the when you're going to be drawing cards from. Each person will get their starting uh, plated order that has this icon on it here, this little knife and block there. Um, and then also, like you see the logo of the, the Bear Burgers Brothers boys or whatever, uh, you go ahead and put that on there as well. Uh, each person gets a uh, an awesome little uh, uh, player aid there and also determine the first player whichever way you can. On your turn, whoever the first player will start the turn, they will choose one of three actions. Um, the most common action is you're going to be playing a card from your hand uh, to, to trigger an action of some sort. Um, I should show you the cards. I do apologize. Um, cards are going to have three distinct areas. They're going to have the ingredient that the card is here. They're going to have the type of person or, or worker that the card is there. And then they're going to have the order that is listed there. So these are roasted veggie sticks. Now, if I wanted to make roasted veggie sticks, I would need an ingredient that is here, this little leafy green vegetable guy there. Um, if I wanted to use it as a, a worker, it would be a driver. And if I had wanted to use it for an ingredient, it would be dairy. So um, you get five of these cards, as you said, and oh, good, I got one. So like, you want to try to make, if you can, you want to try to make... Um, dishes that have your logo on them. Uh, you'll get bonus points for them at the end. So I want to get these Bear Brothers Burgers Boys or whatever. I want to make these things. And so this Summer Cobbler here, uh, I would need a grain and a fruit uh, to make that. But I could also use it as a prep cook, and I could also use it as an ingredient that is a grain. So these cards are like your hand. Um, you get five, as I said, and those remain secret. You'll also notice that the back of the uh, owner card looks exactly the same. You can get that card in your hand it is a wild card because it can uh, replicate uh, uh, any of the other workers' actions, but you can never discard that card. You can't put it in the discard pile. Uh, the only thing you can do is play it and use it, in which case it goes right back down there uh, on, your, on your board. All right, I, and I do want to talk about the boards really quickly if I can. 
Uh, you'll notice that they have these little arrows that point, so uh, cards that are slid under here um, will be hired staff. Um, cards up here will be completed orders, and you're going to be trying to match up uh, these icons on the completed orders, because if you can create a set of those icons, at the end of the game you're going to get a bonus of five points. Uh, cards that are slid under Heath here will be ingredients that are in your fridge. And then cards slid underneath, or actually they aren't slid underneath, but cards down here pointed like that one right there uh, will have, is in your plating area. And so those are the ones you're going to be creating. This over here is your draw limit. When you take an action that allows you to draw cards, you get to draw two cards right now. So you might be saying, what's these grayed out areas? Well, as you can probably see, these scoring tokens, and you get a scoring token each time that you complete an order, um, you go ahead and you can place them over those gray areas, thereby increasing the ability of your truck. So like you're, you're, you'd have, a, you'd get, increase your draw limit here, if you put into this you'd have access to three, you don't go by the number that's on the token, you just go ahead, this wouldn't be five, you, you would just have like three cards you could draw there. Um, you could have three things in your fridge, you could have three hired staff, so on and so forth. So that's, and I, and I like games like that, I like games where you can kind of level up and increase your power as the game progresses. I think that's a nice touch. All right, so the three actions. Uh, first of all, determine the first player, like I said, so find the first player. On your first turn, you can take three actions. One of three actions, I should say. Uh, you can do what's called market research, and then you just get to draw two cards. If you go over um, the, your hand limit, uh, you then discard down to the hand limit, which is six, and then you put those in the discard pile. You can uh, take charge, uh, which you know allows you to uh, draw your owner card into your hand, and then you can be used at a later time. If that puts you over six, you're going to have to discard one of your cards. But remember, you can't discard your owner card. Um, and then you can, or the more common thing you're going to be doing is you're going to be called what's called a lead a staff action. Now, notice I did not say staff infection. The last time we played this game, I think somebody made that joke 25 times. It got very, very old very, very quickly. But this is lead a staff action. When you lead a staff action, what you're going to be doing is you are going to, uh, like start a staff action by picking a card that you have and using its ability. So like if you say, I'm going to use like the driver ability or I'm going to use the prep cook ability. You use that action and then you take that action. Then each person in turn, as you go around the table, can follow that action if they so desire. So if they have a card that is a prep cook and you use the prep cook action, they can play a prep cook and they can go ahead and take that action in turn. Now, there is one cool thing. If you have taken the action that has allowed you to hire somebody, like this prep cook right here, and you had the prep cook, and somebody took a prep cook action, you could automatically take the action without playing a card because you have a prep cook hired and working presently on your food truck. So it kind of makes sense. It makes thematic sense that you're able to do that. It, in addition, if you had a prep cook card in your hand, you could play that as well, and you could take two prep cook actions. Also, as an option, if you have the prep cook, if you decided, and this is if you don't have the card, a prep cook card, or you don't want to do it, um, and remember, if you have your owner card in your hand, you can put your owner card down as a wild card to follow an action that somebody else does. But you can, instead of that, you can take either the the, the, the draw draw cards action, or uh, you know to to put two more cards into your hand. Or uh, you can take the take charge action, which puts the owner in the owner card in your hand as well. So um, you don't have if you, if you can't follow uh, the the lead action that somebody did, you still are able to do something on that particular turn. Also, I should mention that if you like, you have this prep cook here. Somebody did the prep cook action; it gets to your turn. You can take that prep cook action, and you can, if you so desire, take the the um, the the. the the take charge action, which puts the owner card in your hand, or the market research action, which allows you to draw cards. So it's kind of neat when you follow. Um, one, if you were the person leading, you kind of have to see what other people might do if you if you give them the opportunity or the option uh, to take those particular actions. But it also is one of those things where 
uh, you know, if, if, if it's almost better uh, to follow if the person picks something that you have a card for because, or a car or a worker for, because you get to have so many more things that you can do that you normally wouldn't have access to. So it's kind of a neat little uh, aspect of the game. All right, so just uh, I'm going to look at the, show you the player aid here, and th these are the five uh, different workers, and I'm going to go through each one. So. A driver action, you move a card from the marketplace to your fridge as an ingredient. Well, we've already said that we want to make, um, you know, this, this, these classic fries, right? And so we need a grain. And so we can go ahead and we can take, you know, this particular card with a driver action, this, this uh, card that has the grain here, and I can slide that into my fridge like so and show that I have that particular card in my fridge as an ingredient. That is the driver action. Now the cashier action is you move a card from the marketplace uh, to your plating area as an order ticket. Well now I gotta look at my my options here and if I did that action I probably would, might want to take you know this particular card because of the fact that one it is going to score me two points because it's got two ingredients on there but it also has that my my bear burger brothers boys uh, logo on there as well. So then I can go ahead and put that down here. Now remember, I only have room for two, so now my 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 plating area is completely full. I need to get these orders out of here so I can start working on other things. Now if you have a manager. You can move a card from the marketplace to your hired staff for a bonus staff action in future turns. So that's the one I already showed you when I moved that prep quick there. If you take a manager action, then you hire somebody and you place them and you slot them in there. Now the prep cook, the prep cook is good. Uh, you move a card that is an ingredient from your fridge to an order ticket in your plating area. So in this case, this is how we do it. So we go ahead and we, with a prep cook, we're gonna go ahead and take this and we're gonna go ahead and add that to my order. So this is my grain that I need to complete my classic fries. And I'll show you what happens when you complete the order here in just a second, but just, I'm gonna show you the last one. So now here's the executive chef. Uh, play a card as an ingredient from your hand onto an order ticket in your plating area. So this is when you can kind of skip the whole action of getting things into your fridge and then moving them in double action. So with the executive chef, you can go ahead and like, I need, you know, meat for this one. So I could go ahead and I could place a meat card like so underneath and I'd go ahead and, you know, get that going. So, I mean, that's, you know, uh, you know, pretty quickly, like as far as like how that goes. And, you know, like in, so if you had, if you like, let's say uh, I had an executive chef as, as uh, a worker and I was able to do two of those actions, I could actually get both my grain and my meat uh, into that particular spot and I'd be able to finish that uh, plated order as well. So now what happens when you uh, finish off an order? So first things first, when you've completed an order, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the ingredients that completed the order and you're gonna place this completed order off to the side. You show that, I mean, and you just, you can do that in any way. Just make sure that like it's off to the side so you know that it's been completed. You take the, the, the ingredients that were in the order and you go ahead and you place those in the discard pile. So if I completed both these orders, we'd go ahead and we place them like so. So those, those are completed orders and we put the ingredients off, they're gone, don't worry about them. So, then I would score the points that I get for these. So I, I completed a two ingredient and a one ingredient, so I'm gonna get a two and a one, like so. And now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna to get to place those on these locations. So I, like if I wanted to have more space in my fridge and I wanted to be able to draw more cards, I go ahead and place those on those different two different locations. I should say over there. And now I've got those extra abilities as far as those are concerned. Now, you might be saying, well, how do I get these cards? I mean, I'm going to I'm going to earn points, bonus points for these cards because of the fact that they have my logo on them, which is awesome. But you want to get cards that are going to match up. So like, you know, how this has both a grain and a meat, and this one has a grain. I probably want to get these um, to this area over here that are going to allow me to earn those bonus points for the set. Well, as these are depleted, and I'll show you how this works, you're eventually going to get to this token here. And when this token is drawn, people get to pick one card from their completed orders, and they get to place it uh, in this location here, meaning that that, that has been set aside and, and is, is going to be um, used for end game scoring as well. So just that that's how that happens and that's how that moves over there. Now, and that's not 
that's not when this gets taken. It's just when it when it reveals. So you'll notice there were three of these tokens, and that's set up. There's three tokens, and then one of the and and this little trophy, and then another three tokens and a trophy. So here, I'll show you here, and like like so. When that just gets shown and revealed, that's how you do it. People don't actually take that one. So as soon as you see that, then you are able to do this action of placing a, uh, a, a, a one of your items here. So that actually, if you think about it, because of the fact that the game ends once uh, two of these are depleted, if you think about it, you're at most, you're going to see five of, of those. You're going to see at least four, but you're never going to see all six. Just because, well, you... Well, I should say in a, pre in, a, in, a, in a rare situation, you might see six if you can deplete it all at the same time. But for the most part, normally you're going to usually see four or five with a rare thing of six. So keep that in mind as you're putting these cards into the middle here because of the fact that you are like you you, you want to get as many two or three orders, uh, three icon orders there so you you are able to actually complete your set more than once because that's where the big bonus points come in the only other thing that is important to note is that um every card that was played to follow the action that was done they are used to fill in the the spot so like here i'm just gonna go ahead and grab some cards out of my my deck here so if like people followed an action uh, that was done. You use those cards to fill in the empty spots that are in the the marketplace. If you still don't have anything in the market, if you still have open spots in the marketplace, you go ahead and fill those up by taking cards off of the top of the deck. Now, if it is like one a situation where there's only one card, but we had two cards that are going to fill into the marketplace. Yes, you fill one, but then the other player, the player that's they get that's placing the card in, gets to pick one of the spots and cover it up with their card. They can do that uh, to like prevent people access to cards that have their logo on them. Um, they can use it to bury certain ingredients, things like that, and it adds a deeper level of strategy um, and interaction uh, between the players, which I really enjoy a great deal as well. So um, the game, as I said, is going to continue. Uh, each person just, you know, you move this on to the next person, they take their action and so on and so forth, and, it, and the token goes around. As soon as two of these are done, Every, the game stops, you're going to go ahead and uh, you know, complete the action uh, that, that everybody's taken, like that particular round that, that you're playing. It, you, know, it, you don't stop mid-round. But complete that round, and then everybody's going to total up their total number of points that they got from their tokens. They're going to total up their bonus points for the orders that they've completed that have their logo on them, and any bonus points they're going to claim because of the set of, of the, the icons uh, that, that they have in their plated orders that are up on this particular part of their food truck. As always, the person who has the most points will win and will be the food truck champion! Alright, so there you go. That, that is how you play the game. Um, I love card games like this. Um, you've probably seen card games like this before. Um, and I'm a sucker uh, for, for games that have multiple use of uh, variable cards. But let me talk more about all that uh, in my final thoughts. I'll do that right now. All right, thanks for learning how to play the old food truck champion. Now, uh, long time uh, listeners, viewers, what have you, um, know that like one of my first ever videos I ever did uh, was for a little little known game called Glory to Rome. Uh, Glory to Rome, it remains in my top 10 games of all time. Um, and even though there are maybe other games that have come along that do the job that Glory to Rome does and does it better, um, because of the fact that it kind of opened my eyes and, and, and revealed uh, a, a whole weird level of awesome card games to me. Um, it, it just it has this warm, soft spot in my heart. Um, and obviously, if you've played, if you if you've played Glory to Rome, you're going to recognize uh, the, the the likeness uh, of Food Truck Champion uh, to that game. And I don't have a problem with that at all. I I say if you can make an awesome game by standing on the shoulders of the giants that came before you, then go for it. And Food Truck Champion has made a very fun, very awesome game. And for the yeah, you know, and, and and frankly, you know, it's like it's kind of tough to find a copy of Glory to Rome. So if you're looking for that type of feel, uh, you can get it. But regardless, this game kind of stands on its own. It isn't just a port over. It isn't just a hey, let's copy that game and make this. It it's taking some of the feel. It's taking some of that genre. But they are definitely doing their own thing. I really dig the theme for one. But you know, theme doesn't you know it could be about spaceships needing parts. So regardless, but I do like food trucks. One of the coolest thing, coolest best things 
about going to Gen Con uh, is going to the food truck area. My wife and I really, really enjoy the food that's out there, and we like finding like um, the cool, uh, the, the cool new tastes and, and venues or whatever that are in those food trucks. I mean, we come from an area that from upper Midwest where it's cold too often for there really to be a lot of food trucks anywhere at any time. So. Uh, having that uh, as an option is really, really cool at that convention. Now, regardless, like I said, um, theme aside, the game is just fun and it plays well. It, it, and it also it plays thematically well. Um, it makes sense. You know, it's like, oh, I have a, a prep cook working for me, so I can go ahead. I don't have to, like, you know, expend a card. I don't have to expend extra energy myself to do it. I've, I hired a dude to go ahead and do my prep cooking for me. So then it makes sense that you're able to do that. The great thing about this game is the fact that you are relying on the other players to make choices on their turn that benefit you. And on your turn, you're ultimately going to have situations where you're going to want to play certain cards and take certain actions that are going to benefit the other people after you. And that is like the big fun decision. I, all, I love games that have that thing, that moment where you have to decide does it help me out enough where I can help my opponents as well so I can still stay ahead? And and so and because of the, the, the game itself is kind of timed and controlled uh, by the other players as far as how quickly it gets done, that adds yet another wrinkle to it because of the fact that, like, you know, I need to kind of, like, do I race and do a lot of really, really quick and easy uh, uh, recipes, you know, so I can just gather up a lot of those easy, easy points and then hopefully, like, I can hold on for the win? Or do I take a slower, more measured response? Do I build up my truck? Do I build up my options and then start trying to cash in for the big three-point recipes? So there's all these different decisions you have to make, all these different venues, all these different strategies you can take, and but they all depend upon what the other players are doing and whether or not they leave those doors open for you uh, to take those actions. And that's, I, I just love that. I love games with high interactivity. I love games that I rely on the other players and their actions to help determine what I do. And, and I, you, you learn to be kind of a dynamic player in the games like this instead of just being this static, okay, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to play this card every single time. You don't do that. You have to kind of react and roll with how the game is flowing and be willing to switch up your strategy when you need to at that exact moment. So fantastic game. I love it. I love games like this. I think if you are looking for this type of game, this type of genre, I think you're really, really going to like uh, Food Truck Champion. If you have any questions about it, go ahead and ask away. I'll be happy to answer those as best as I can. Uh, as always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, I'm the Undead Viking, and I'm telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right. Bye-bye.